Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And the Lane Casa, we have gotten a lot of moisture, summer rains. You can count on it in northern Arizona. We never quite know how much, but there's always going to be some moisture. And so this is a good moisture year, and you're seeing the plants respond. And so I've I've got brand new, my my autumn sage. This is uh, Salvia gregii is the Latin name. It's a little shrub about knee high, kind of ball shaped. It was struggling in the heat, struggling, struggling, scorching. Now, about three weeks after the scorching, it just went woof, took off, and is now covered in flowers and buds. It doesn't take very long. But I had fertilized those plants because I knew they're tough. As soon as they got any respite, any kind of help from nature, a little bit of clouds, just, just cloud cover, they would have sprung to life. And so and they're tr- truly spectacular. The other one that's a companion to that is Russian sage. There's a big blue shrub. Oh, about hip high or so. It's blue or lavender or, you know, I'm, uh, it's got a purpley kind of blue color to it. But it's got this spiky, sagey, almost uh, a lavender kind of look to it, but much larger. That's another one. It just took off. Now, it was blooming before. But now it's nice and full and looks it's just striking, stunning. So from now through really October, so you've got a good, strong two and a half months of growing season left. And so this is the time to really get the most out of this is almost a better bloom time than spring. Because the things that are so beautiful are so striking, they're so big and so full and so bright uh, they get muted a little bit only because the only reason I hesitate is because there's so much green that sometimes they, they uh, in the spring, you watch a lilac come into bloom and it's all by itself. It's competing with nothing. Uh, but now when a crepe myrtle goes into bloom, it's got all this other green amount around it. And so it, I, I think they're brighter. They're, they, they, the fragrance is equal to that of roses and lilacs or spring bloomers. Uh, but I think there's just a lot going on in the yard. You need to have some of those summer bloomers to really enjoy the rest of the season. Uh, you're you're starting to see, you're not starting, you don't want to see fall color on your plants. I'm hearing a couple folks say their aspens and maples are showing a little stress. They're showing some yellow or reds showing up early. That's a full month and a half early. That means more than likely, just kind of an 80% of all issues in the garden are water related. And so if you've got trees or shrubs that are turning fall color too early, this is summer still. We're a month away, just over five weeks away from, from autumn, official start of autumn. You should not be seeing fall color on your plants or any kind of muted yellow off color. It should be rich, thick, green. And if it's not doing that, you've got it probably a water issue. And so they're getting too much water now. So they went from, oh my gosh, I can't water them enough. They're scorching. It's 105 degrees. Oh my gosh, what are, my plants don't know what to do, to they're drowning. So it's a water issue. So you need to tweak back that irrigation some. So you bumped it up to every three, four days of watering your trees and shrubs during that heat. It was hard to keep things going. And now we've got, I think I've had over a half inch of rain in, in, in our gardens, and I'm not in, in the strongest rain area. And so some of you got much more. And so those, if you put, if you're still watering every three days, plus two good strong rains this week, it's too much. So the plants will stress out and you'll see this coloration come onto it. And it's easy to correct, just throttle back the irrigation. Or if you see the rain here, just skip a cycle. Let it go. Let the let nature do it for you. And then you should green those things up. And so if you've not fertilized, so so it's usually an iron or magnesium. Usually it's iron, sulfur kind of, kind of uh, a problem. If they're turning color, your pH is crept up too high because you're watering too much. There's a whole lot of chemistry you could go into. 
But basically, that's it. Give it a good, strong fertilizer and some fast-acting iron. It should green it just, just right up, just like that. I mean, within, within a week, nice and green. So, But if you let it go, it's going to become worse, and that plant will be naked way before everything else even thinks it's fall yet. So it's stressed out. It's They're putting themselves to bed, so don't let that happen. Uh, another thing that I'm doing right now in, in my yard is I'm starting to cut back pretty strongly those things that uh, have grown so much. So the hedgerows, evergreens, vines. Oh my gosh. Got a kibias and honeysuckle that are going nuts. And so I'm starting to trim those things back now. So Eliagnus, boxwood, red tipotinia, they've gotten so big that I'm going to trim those things back now. So they've got time to recover and start to flush new growth before winter hits. So by the time it's December 1, sometime in December, it gets cool enough where the plants kind of lock in and whatever you have, that's what you stay with through winter, through the end of February. And so I'm trying to have the perfect shape. I want to lock into this beautiful, hedged, neat, tidy, controlled, not wild thing that every time I walk by it till next spring, it wants to grab me and, and to kind of hug me and throw me into the back of the, into this huge vine. So I'm trying to control that. So I'm just shaping those things, fertilizing them, and then they'll grow, they'll flush a little bit more growth and they'll just be this beautiful hedge right through winter. So it's an opportune time. This end of monsoon, the right before autumn kind of hits, this is kind of a window when you, when you trim and clean things up, keep them looking good. And then they'll, they'll stay that way or right through winter. If you wait, they can have this, you, you, you'll see the uh, stems are just cut back. You'll see branches that are open. It just has this, I've just been pruned back look. Well, that's fine if it's right at the end of, of, of winter, right before the spring flush grow, go, goes. But if you want it to look, if you cut it back earlier than that, let's say January, December, November, uh, it's going to look, it's going to look like it's been hacked on for three, four months. If you do it now, it has time to recover, cover up those prune marks, have fresh new foliage, goes into winter and it keeps its form. Just kind of some, some help. I mean, it, it'll, it'll make a difference, really. Another one, if you're trying to keep your fruit trees down. So the, the peach harvest is, is almost over. So I'm having peaches for breakfast several times this week. They're so delicious. They melt in your mouth. Oh my gosh. Just they're, my mouth's watering thinking about it. Um, when those plants are done uh, fruiting, you've got the last fruit off, go ahead and trim them back. It's called summer pruning. I don't think we prune back our, our fruit trees. If you want to keep them down to size smaller, this is the time right after you're done harvesting the plums, the, 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 the peaches, apricots, nectar, pe uh, cherries, prune those things back to keep them down to size, especially if you want to keep them down at like fence height or maybe eight foot tall. The secret is let them just keep them trimmed. Now the heavy pruning is done in January, February, March, but the suckers, that new elongated growth that happened this last spring and summer, you trim that back to keep the growth down where you want it to keep it shaped. So I do this every, about sometime in August, very first part of September, I'm trimming things back because yeah, I've got several fruit trees in containers. I don't want them to get too big. If they get too large, they blow over in the wind. Well, that's no good. Then they're too big to harvest, and they're too big for proportion for the for the pot size. They, they overtake their space in the patio. And so I strategically, right after the I'm done harvesting the peaches or the fruit, I'll trim it back to. Uh, for me, it's about eight foot tall. So I stand up on the bucket. I'm a six foot two guy, as far as I can reach, about eight feet. That's nothing else gets above that. I just trim it back, and it's been that way for 15 years. It's still growing. Eventually, it's going to grow out of that pot, but dang, it looks good and it produces fruit every year. You can do that on your fence line, on your orchard. You can keep things controlled by cutting back those summer suckers on your fruit trees, cutting back your evergreens. So it keeps them so they don't get this wild look. They're more trimmed and manicured. Trimming back those vines so they don't take over. Now is a good time to trim some of those things. 
We've got a lot in store for you. Let's go to your Q&A section with Lisa Watersling coming in right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.